We are often told that adaptive learning products are based on learning science or brain science. But what does that mean? We asked experts at McGraw-Hill Education for the company's perspective on the role and limits of science in learning product design. We use the phrase learning science a lot. We hear the phrase learning science a lot. What's the science here? What do we know at this point, and what are we testing around adaptive learning in general? It's a great question. I think one of the things that, as a community, we need to have a discussion around are uh, what we call it known knowns. What are, what are the known knowns in learning science? And there is not by any means any agreement, but we started to take a position on this uh, and say, hey, to the best of our knowledge, we think these are the known knowns in learning science. So one of the starting points is uh, Benjamin Bloom, same person behind Bloom's taxonomy. And he did a research study called the Two Sigma Problem. I'm going to just summarize the results. Two outcomes of that study. One was, I think he demonstrated, at least provisionally, that most learners are capable of high achievement. Second, he broke up instruction into three groups. Traditional instruction, mastery learning, what he called mastery learning, and then third was one-on-one uh, -on -one tutoring. And the results were one sigma or one standard deviation. I think of it as one grade level improvement students who were subjected to mastery learning, formative assessment, learning in stages, deliberate practice, their outcomes were one standard deviation better than those in standard instruction. Students who, or the learners who were uh, received one-on-one -on -one tutoring, two standard deviations. He called the paper two sigma problem because he said as a society, we can't afford to give every learner a master coach or master uh, tutor. So it stands as a problem of even one standard deviation uh, improvement in learning outcomes, we haven't achieved that at scale. But the elements are, if we look at Bloom, it's mastery learning and formative assessment. Breaking up the learning into stages and then making sure that learners get the continuous feedback and correction as they're going. Uh, so I, I would say that, that that's a landmark study, and we're trying to understand that and how we can apply that. And if we think of adaptive systems, they really embody uh, mastery learning. So if I understand correctly, what you're saying is the study showed that you can take a student who would be a C student in a typical conventionally taught class and turn that in person into an A student with one-on-one -on -one tutoring, and that what we've tried to do with adaptive learning is to take some of those principles, the mastery learning that might get that student to be a B student, and the one-on-one -on -one tutoring that might get the student to be an A student, but so far we're maybe getting that student to be a C plus student? Is that, how big is the change that we, we expect to see so, so far? So th th these are again early results from, uh, this is peer-reviewed research mm -hmm. that academic researchers have done on things like Alex. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, now, this is subject to more studies and confirmation, mm -hmm. uh, but there are peer-reviewed established studies that show that with Alex in the, some of the domains, uh, we're able to see one sigma improvement. This is going from a C to a B and a B to an A, uh, someone who's failing to a passing. Uh, and we're, we're gonna, we'll, we'll be doing more of these types of studies. You know, I think the two sigma is a huge leap. If, if we can even achieve one sigma improvement, that, that's huge. It's in doing it in a scalable way. And just to build on that, though, the one sigma outcome is not simply engage in the software and you have it. It's more what Matt was talking about. It's a thoughtful application of an adaptive system. So back to there are no hows. The adaptive system only helps to get the one sigma change if the pedagogy and the design of the course takes advantage of it. Okay. Right? It works in service of the teacher. It works in service of her course design. And that's a really important point for anybody who's trying to change their classroom in any way to remember that there are no silver bullets here, but there are a lot of helpful ones. But it's got to be thoughtfully implemented. Yeah.